CDM Electronics presents training on Times Protect products. But, you know, one of the things that definitely goes along with the cable is lightning protection. So, uh, you know, if you, if you look at any kind of a radio system at all, you've got your coax cable hooked up to two things. Most of the time you get it hooked up to a base station radio. That radio could be, radio could be for wireless internet, could be a you know, cellular radio, uh, could be a skater radio, whatever it is. And at the other end you got an antenna somewhere, probably up high, and if there's any possibility of getting hit by lightning, that lightning goes through the cable, you know, that, that power and that voltage goes through that cable, it's gonna run right into that radio and blow out like, you know, multi-thousand or radio that's worth tens of thousands of dollars, you know, sometimes. So you wanna protect it. So that's the whole idea behind, like, you know, lightning protection solution. It's and you guys are kind of more interesting as the one of the US here, so. Uh, you know, I think everybody knows Florida is kind of like the lightning capital of the world. You know, if anybody's ever lived in Florida, you know that if it's if it's summertime and it's four o'clock in the afternoon, you're going to have a, a, a thunderstorm. There's going to be a lot of lightning. So, in fact, Polyphaser, you know, which sort of wrote the book and invented lightning protection, you know, inline lightning protection, the guy who founded the company uh, was a ham radio guy in, in Florida. He worked for you know Walt Disney down here, you know, Disney World. But uh, he was a ham operator. He had a lot of friends who had, uh, you know, ham sites and antennas, and they were constantly getting hit in Florida. So he came up with the idea of uh, like inline lighting protection, inline surge protection. His name was Roger Block. But uh, you know, you can kind of see from this, you know, you get into the, you know, the eastern and southern part of the country, and you think about all the storms that they've been having, or all the tornadoes and the violent weather. You know, that that's almost an array of like where all of that stuff's been going on. If anybody remembers this, but th this is a plane taken off from uh, Kanazawa Airport in Japan, and somebody got this picture of a, light a lightning stroke, a, you know, a ground to cloud lightning stroke with the airplane in between, and he's kind of like it as it was happening. And uh, the, the reason that this happens is you get a, a, a different, uh, you know, a very, very high charge differential between clouds and the ground. So the ground could be at a very high potential or, or low potential and the, and the cloud, you know, at the, at the opposite. And what you wind up doing is ionizing the air. You know, the, the cable is grounded. You know, you take the jacket off the cable, you put the ground strap on, there's a lead on it, you attach it to the tower or metal object or whatever. So you think you have everything grounded, but you know, in reality, you don't have everything grounded. What happens is most of the energy will wind up on the shield because it's on the outside and it's grounded, okay? Um, and the reason it's about 70% is because the center conductor is much smaller than the shield. The rest of that energy is going to go down that center conductor all the way to the radio equipment, okay? So you need a way to get the energy and the voltage off the center conductor, and that's what these lightning protectors are, are for. So the way that we get rid of the uh, energy on the center conductor, was when there's a lightning strike, we use these things that are called, you know, inline lightning protectors. And what they do is one of these three things. This is a little test I always like to give people. They either destroy the energy, they absorb the energy, or they divert the energy. So I already kind of gave you the answer because I used a, a, a phrase. So uh, anybody think it destroys the energy, absorbs it? The 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 That's right, because what I said was it has to get the energy off the, off the center conductor. Now, there's a reason that you wind up with that energy on the center conductor. I'll get to that a little bit later, too. So it is, it is the vertical energy. So...
a little little bit about the marketing, you know, just to share this with you here. These are the you know competitors if you want to know who we're competing with. Um, you know, I mean, you guys are competing with you know the other distributors that are out there selling these things. But you got Andrew who makes them. H and S is uh, Huber and Sooner, and uh, you guys probably know them from the Connector universe. Right? From the connectors, a company called Satel from France, Radial from France, uh, Narda, some of the others, you know, Polyphaser. They're you know, kind of like the, the big guy. So it's, it's Andrew H H and S and Polyphaser. Those are the ones that you're going to hear. So if customers, uh, you know, if you're talking to a customer and they're using Lightning Protection, and you get an H and S part number or you get an Andrew part number, you can ask us. We have a cross reference that I'll leave with you. We really do have products that offer you, the, uh, to offer the customer the best protection against lightning, lowest insertion loss, lowest return loss, lowest energy throughput, which is the key to protecting the equipment, which winds up being the most cost effective you know, solution for you. So these are basically the uh, three, you know, just in broad terms, the three different product lines that we've got: the LP uh, BTR series, which uh, is just the you know, standard lightning protector for 20 to 1,000 megahertz. So this is a very popular lightning protector for like two-way LAN, mobile radio, uh, public safety, the, the whole, like the, 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 almost everything that we're talking about minus the carriers and wireless internet and uh, uh, the uh, unlicensed uh, frequency bands. So, so far we've probably sold more of these than we have of anything else, the BTRs. These go from 20 to 1,000 megahertz, so that's the first one. And then the LPSTRLs, uh, these are also just you know, straight DC block. They go from 680 to 2,200 megahertz, get into more detail. And then there's uh, the series, which is the LPGTR. Now, the first two are what we call DC block. That means that no, no DC gets through on these things, you know, no way, uh, you know, no how on a regular basis, okay? And the idea is to, to block any voltage during a lightning strike. But the last series, the GTRs, these will allow a certain level of DC voltage to pass through because they're being connected to equipment where you need to get DC up to a tower top amplifier or a smart antenna or something. So you have to allow a certain amount of DC to, to pass through. So these things are, are different because they're letting DC through all the time but if there's a lightning strike, they have to be able to recognize it. it's like, uh oh, this is way more voltage than I should be carrying. I got to turn on, shunt that to ground, and uh, protect the equipment. So those are a little bit different designs. So those are what those are. Now, all of these first uh, th uh, three series are in the LMR catalog. If you go in the catalog, or they're in a couple of different places on our website. They're in the catalog on our website. There's a separate section on the website. So, but the. Uh, you know, this is the uh, BTR series, or, you know, DC block, 20 to 1,000 megahertz. You know, all of your two-way land mobile radio applications. Nomenclature for these things is, I mean, every lightning protector that gets sold has at least one female connector on there, okay? So the, the uh, one's always going to be a female or, or not, yeah, yeah, connector or, or port. The other one's either going to be a female or a male. So now these are... These only work in one direction. So if you're trying to protect the um, uh, equipment, you, you, you want to make sure you know, that if it's not a, just an a N-female to N-female, you have the uh, male. You know, if it's going to be male on one side, it's on the right side. So the second one that you see down there after the LPBTR NFF, that's N-female, female. The LPBTR NMS is N with a male on the surge side. Okay, and the next one is N. MP, which is end mail on the protected side. So uh, that's just how the nomenclature you know, works on these things. LTE is long-term evolution, they call it. Uh, you know, just the cellular carriers, you know, moving to a different technology, 
scheme and uh, and public safety there's a there's new public safety band at 700 megahertz so this is a nice one too uh, and very very good PIM performance low PIM so again when you hear PIM you got some really good products now for people who mentioned PIM you got the, the smooth wall cable you got a good low PIM connector or a lightning protector you got PIM test cables so you got to when they mention PIM you got three things you can talk to them with the end connectors on there it's all the, all the same specs just an end connector instead of the DIN now these are a little bit different the other ones the, the ETRs and the and the STRLs those are what we call unidirectional. You can only install them in one direction, so you got to make sure if you have a male connector, it's on the right side, so you're still protecting the equipment. The GTRs are bidirectional, so you can install them, you know, in any direction. So there, you don't have to worry about, you know, which side is the male on. Okay, you just—it's either going to be female, female, or female, male, because if you, you just got to turn it in the right direction, it'll, it'll work. And these are the ones that'll pass DC up to the tower top amplifier or the smart antenna or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They sell one called their RGT, and then there's another one that they sell. So you have to buy it separately. So we're less money than them without the bracket. And then when you add the bracket, and like you know, this one here, we're listing it for sixty-nine dollars. There's a seventy-five plus nine, so you're up to eighty-four dollars already. So we're like a much much better bargain. And then you know, the bracket that we have is this universal bracket, depending on which direction you can install. You install it so it's got a DIN on one side, it's got an N on the other side, and it's got the grounding holes on both sides. So it's like one, one size fits all. The polyphase, they might have changed it because I think they saw ours. But you had to buy either the DIN bracket or the, or the N bracket. Again, it's a whole you know, inventory, you know, minimizing inventory issue. You know, better materials and design, very, very tight manufacturing tolerances, which is how we get the, the good pin performance on those STRLs. Using uh, better materials and then tight manufacturing tolerances, that's the key. For more information about CDM Electronics products and services, email our sales department at sales at cdmelectronics.com or call toll-free 877-386-8200.